Hi, I'm Letitia from Elderberry Creek Farms and today we're going to be fermenting. As we've been bringing in the harvest here on the farm, I've been doing some canning and some dehydrating, but one of the things that's been really weighing heavily on my mind is if we didn't have a pressure canner and we didn't have our electric dehydrator, then how would we preserve our harvest? And so as you look at ancient civilizations, they used to ferment their foods. If they milked their cow, they'd get a gallon or two gallons a day and, and they'd have to do something with that. You know, so that's how cheese came along. And they'd go out to the vineyard and they would pick grapes and within a few hours, those grapes would start to ferment. And so, that's how we got wine. And they used to use root cellars and stuff like that to preserve the harvest, but fermenting foods definitely, in my opinion, gives it a lot more nutritional value. It helps you to process and digest all those vitamins and minerals a lot better. So today I'm gonna show you two recipes. It's an apple beet salad and a beet kvass. And this is called lacto-fermentation. So the first recipe I'm gonna show you is beet kvass. It's really super simple. All you need are your fresh beets and water and salt. So I'm just gonna run through this. I uh, pull my beets from the garden. I wash them off in the kitchen sink. And then I peel my beets, which beets are a little hard to peel. So make sure your knife is sharp. Uh, one thing I didn't mention is anytime you're going to be doing fermentation, you want to make sure that your hands are washed really, really well and that any jars or spoons or anything like that are also washed and clean and sanitary because you don't want any bad bacteria growing in your fermentation. You just want your good bacteria to be growing. You can cube these up however you like. I kind of like to do, you can do cubes, you can gelene them. There's a lot of different options. It's however you want to eat them later. I like to put them on salads. I feed them to my younger children um, just on the side of their plate when they have lunch or, or dinner. They're kind of salty and kind of tart. And I think I obviously did not pick a very sharp knife, so. Um, I'm probably going to have to go grab another sharp knife. So the rule of thumb is one tablespoon of salt. I use Redmond's Real Salt. You can see there's flex in here of all the minerals, and I don't use iodized salt. I don't suggest that. And it's one tablespoon per quart of water. So here I'm gonna have, uh, you know, about not even two cups of water. So I'm gonna put in a teaspoon of water I, or salt. I tend not to like it too salty. And then I pour water over the top. Now make sure not to use chlorinated water. I, um, I do have rural water and so I use a filter on my water. If you have chlorinated water and you don't have a filter, something that you can do is put your water in a jar, cover it with a cloth, let it sit out 24 hours and um, the, chlor the chlorine will evaporate from the water. And then I usually just put a lid on. I make sure to label it and date it. Today I'm gonna to do something a little bit different. I'm going to attempt to put a cabbage leaf on the top. That's supposed to help with molding or anything and that's what a lot of people do. I've never done this before. So I'm just gonna do it to try it out and see how it works. But this helps too and I probably, I think I put too much beets in here. So let me pull some of these out, more water. All right, now I'm making a mess, but you get my picture. So this keeps the beets from floating on the top. And then I put my clean lid on top, screw it on, 
And then you can also put how many days you want to keep it. But this is going to sit on your counter in a dark place or you can put it in the cabinet, just don't forget about it. And I'm going to just open it, taste it every day or two. You can leave it on the counter up to five days. And then when it gets to the taste that you like, you stick it in the refrigerator. And then you can eat it plain. You can put it on your salads. You can throw it in a smoothie. There's lots of different things that you can do it. So this is just plain beet kvass. So this next recipe, I'm going to do a beet apple salad that's lacto-fermented. I'm going to use several beets from the garden that I've peeled, I washed and I peeled, and some green apples that are organic that I bought at the store, and I've already peeled these to grate these. So I'm just going to grate these into a container. I'm going to make about a quart of this beet salad. So I'll probably need about two cups grated beets, two cups apples. So get everything off your grater. This is what I have now. I've got my beets and my apples. And I'm gonna put in a tablespoon of my well, maybe a little bit less than a tablespoon because I tend to not like my fermentations as salty as some of the books. So I'm going to put in um, just shy of a tablespoon. So that's my just shy of salt. I'm going to mix it in here, get real good and messy. And the salt is going to help bring all the juices out. So hopefully I don't really have to add much water. Now like I said, if you don't like getting stained, then you probably want to use um, gloves. So I'm just going to squeeze everything. I can start to hear the juices kind of flowing. I'm going to use this meat mallet to just help squeeze some of these juices out and pound it and just get the juices flowing. So as you guys can see, I forgot to add my lemon juice. So I added about two teaspoons of lemon juice and I'm just shy of filling this up. Now I'm gonna put some water in here. You wanna get out the air bubbles. Now I have a cabbage leaf that I have cut to size here somewhere. And everything stirred in, my salt's in here, my lemon juice. So. I used about, um, like I said, a few beets, a few green apples, put the lid on. I've already labeled my jar and this can sit in a dark place in your cabinet for anywhere from four days to two weeks, depending on how you like it. You can open it up, you can taste it, see how it's tasting. Once it gets to the flavor and the taste that you like, you can then put it in the refrigerator. But don't let it just sit in the cabinet for two weeks because the fermentation process is going to start bubbling. It's going to start, you know, everything moving and you could end up uh, bulging the top or blowing a can if you're not really, really careful. So just be mindful, check it every day, make sure that the can's not bulging on top. And uh, if there's, you know, uh, sometimes these things will maybe mold a little bit on top. If it's like a white-ish, well, this would be pink because of the beets. If it's a little bit, you know, a weird film on top, sometimes that'll happen. As long as it's not like stinky or rancid smelling or anything like that. Um, I'm kind of weird about fermenting. So if it molds, I personally don't eat it. That's just because I'm weird about stuff like that. But most of the people who ferment on a regular basis scrape the mold off the top and go ahead and eat it. So that's kind of up to you guys if that's what you want to do, but I'm a little bit too squeamish for that. So this is my apple bee salad, and I'm thinking what I'm going to do is serve this to the kids with um, like a little bit on their plate for lunch or even on a regular salad. 
So try out these recipes, let me know how you like it, ask any questions, and I'll try to answer any questions that you have. And thanks for watching today here at Elderberry Creek Farms.